Okay, welcome to this installment on uh, grounding and charging by conduction. Uh, first, we'll start with charging by conduction. Now, the word conduction in this case means literally to touch. So you're going to uh, charge one object by touching it with another charged object. So here in diagram uh, number one, I have a negatively charged sphere. It has an excess of negative charge. I'm going to touch it to this uh, electroscope here. Now, by touching, you're forming a pathway for electrons to travel. The electrons don't like to be together because they have a force of repulsion between them. So if you touch these two together, electrons are going to move from uh, the charged object to the uh, uncharged or neutral object, in this case the electroscope. Uh, now they'll keep moving over there until you get a balance between the two objects because the charge, the total charge, uh, on the object must stay the same, on the two objects must stay the same. Uh, and then at that point if you pull the charged object you had before away, then you're going to be left behind with a negative charge on the electroscope. Now every time you charge by conduction, again it's only the electrons that move, and um, the type of charge left behind on the newly charged object will always be the same as what you started with. So here I started with negative, the newly charged object is negative. Okay, it will be the same. Uh, if we start with positive, then we'll get positive. So that's an example here. Uh, we've got the neutral charged object. And again, neutral doesn't mean there's no charge. It means that for every uh, positive charge, there's a balancing negative charge. There's no net charge on the object. Uh, we touch it with the positive. Now this time, because the the positive charge is a lack of electrons, there's too few electrons, then electrons from the uh, neutral object will get pulled in to the pan in this case. Now that's going to take um, electrons away from the sphere, so when we pull the pan away, we now have this imbalance of positive charge. So here we start with positive and we ended up with positive. But again, it was always the same type charge whenever you charge by conduction, which again just means to touch. Okay, so uh, checking our understanding. Um, a neutral sphere is touched by a negatively charged metal rod. As a result, the sphere will be uh, negative and the metal rod will be negative. Okay, so they're both B um, in that they both must have the same charge. Okay, and since I started with a negatively charged rod, they both have to end up as negative. As long as I am touching, which again, touch means conduction. Okay, and two, a neutral metal sphere is touched. Let's bring that on back. Uh, a neutral metal sphere is touched by a negatively charged metal rod. Uh, during the process, electrons are transferred from. Okay, so again, it's neutral sphere and a negatively charged rod. Now, the negative charges don't like to be together, so they're going to try to get away from each other. So they're going to go from the rod and into the sphere, giving the sphere a net negative charge. So... Um, Electrons are transferred from the rod, charged rod, to the neutral sphere, and that'll give it a negative charge. Okay, now it couldn't have been this answer, and it couldn't have been this answer because we can't get a positive charge by conduction with a negative, uh, negatively charged rod. Okay, three, a neutral sphere is touched by a positively charged metal rod. So the neutral sphere and the positive rod. Uh, now this time there's a lack of electrons over here. So what we're going to see is the electrons are going to move this way. So they're going to move, oh, sorry, forget that part anyway. It's protons, so it's nonsense. Again, protons never move anywhere, so that's not what happens. Uh, it's always the electrons that move. It can't possibly be the protons. So anytime it says the protons move, forget it. That has to be nonsense. 
KML sphere is uh, electrically neutral if it's touched by a positively charged metal rod. Uh, as a result, the metal charged sphere becomes charged positively. Okay, so the um, sphere was neutral. It got touched by a positively charged rod. Now that's a lack again of electrons. So the electrons are going to move from the sphere into the rod. So the um, sphere loses, the rod gains electrons, uh, and we get positive charge on both. So the metal sphere loses, not gains. It's not that one. Electrons are transferred from the sphere to the rod. Yes, they are. Metal sphere loses electrons. That's part of transferring. Um, the overall charge is always conserved for the system, so the total amount of charge is the same. Again, protons are never transferred, and pro positive electrons, uh, there's no such thing. So it's uh, the electrons that move. Okay, now if we have a charged object and we want to get it uncharged, the easiest way to do that is to provide a path to the ground. So we're going to look at grounding. Now, uh, in grounding, you have some kind of charged object, like in this case, this uh, positively charged pin here. Uh, you want to be able to balance that charge off. Now, if you touch it with some kind of conductive path, in this case, it's aluminum straw or an aluminum tube, a piece of metal. Aluminum is a good conductor as a metal. Um, there's a lack of electrons down here. So what's going to happen is, from the ground, in this case we're using the person's body, essentially as the ground, a ground is just a source of electrons, either a place for electrons to go or a place to get electrons from. Uh, in this case, we're going to get the electrons from that. Those electrons are then going to count, uh, balance out the positive charge that was there, and when you're done grounding, you'll always end up with a neutral object. So it takes a positive to a neutral. Now con to continue, it does have to be a conductive pathway. So in this case, plastic is an insulator. So you really can't use uh, an insulator as your conductive pathway. It doesn't conduct. So no electrons can move into the pan, so the pan doesn't balance. So you still have a positive charge built up on the pan. Uh, so grounding is a way that we can get either electrons into the material if it's positive or away from the material if it's negative excess electrons uh, and get the object back to neutral. So it's a process for neutralizing the charge on any object. Well, that covers uh, conduction and grounding. We'll look at induction, the most complicated process, next uh, in our study of electrostatics.